Today's podcast from the archives is with Cleveland Browns assistant offensive line coach Scott Peters. I've had the privilege of knowing Scott Peters since 2013. Uh, discovered that we had been using some of his techniques and reached out to him uh, and the work he was doing at his company called Tip of the Spear and uh, a relationship developed from there. Was really excited when Scott went to uh, my hometown team, the Cleveland Browns, as the offensive line assistant and not surprised at what he's been able to help with there. I know that Coach Callahan had been using Scott's techniques for some time and uh, the Browns yesterday against the Dallas Cowboys set the record for rushing against the Cowboys with 307 yards. It was an impressive effort, especially because the Cleveland Browns' number one running back, Nick Chubb, went down in the first half with a knee injury. The number two guy was limited in what he was able to do because of a aggravated groin injury and that meant that the number three and four guy were going to take some reps and they did and they did well actually the number three guy Dearness Johnson had 95 yards I think this is an important episode and you're going to hear about some of the philosophy that Scott has in developing technique what his company tip of the spear does is not just for offensive line it's actually developing the technique of all the aspects of contact whether it's offensive line defensive line blocking as a receiver, defeating blocks across the defense. Scott does an excellent job in teaching that. This is definitely going to be an offensive line-centric type of episode. However, uh, you're going to see that the technique that Scott teaches is definitely superior and is about better performance. Take a listen. I know you're going to enjoy it. I know I've enjoyed working with Scott over the years and am excited about what he's doing in Cleveland with the Browns. I'm joined today by a repeat performer, actually one of the first guys I interviewed when we launched this podcast back in 2016, and that is former NFL player, contact expert, Scott Peters. Scott, always great to talk to you. Great talking with you, and congrats on the podcast success, I and mean, all the things really taken off, man, since we are first time together, but uh, it's great work you've been doing. Thank you. Yesterday, we hit our 500,000 downloads. And I mean, I'm kind of looking at it and seeing how this might shape up the rest of the year. And we might be able to just in the next six months as this has progressed, go over a million. So uh, I'm happy that we're able to serve the coaches, especially out there who listen to this and give them great information. And I'm excited to be able to do that here with you today. And I think one of the interesting things that's happened since the first time we talked is that uh, we've been able to to partner up and uh, come together as a team to really present all the great things you've been doing. And for our listeners out there, I guess, before we go in too deep into this, let's talk a little bit about your, your background and share with them just a brief highlight of what you developed here and, and how this has progressed over the time that you were an NFL player to where we're at right now. Sure. Yeah. So Keith, I played, you know, I played the NFL for seven years. I played at college at Arizona State um, prior to that. And I was an offensive lineman and, and uh, playing offensive line was, was a uh, it's funny. It's a position that everyone talks about technique. Oh, it's such a technical position, but I'll be honest, like throughout my NFL career, I, I really only had, I'm not to put anybody down any coaches because that's really great people, great men as coaches, but some, they weren't always very knowledgeable or maybe they weren't uh, as far as technique goes. So I had uh, was fortunate to play for Jim McNally for a year uh, during my time in the league. Uh, but, but that wasn't, uh, I got so much different information, kind of maybe competing information um, as a player. So I found myself frustrated and um, I was oftentimes leading with my head. That was what we did. You know, there was, uh, it was actually the way it was taught and, and I, it still is being taught that way. But as we know, uh, due to, you know, all the concerns with uh, surrounding head injuries and things like that, it's affecting the game and players. And um, I got out of football um, and I got into mixed martial arts uh, training. I opened a facility in, in Scottsdale, Arizona, I was doing jujitsu and boxing and MMA and just became an, you know, totally immersed myself in that knowledge, that information. And I started to see, you know, other ways to do things in terms of the body, the way the body works, um, getting tied up with a small wrestler who's a really elite level wrestler. That's a nightmare. <laughs> Those guys are super powerful. And I was a 300 pound lineman and I was getting thrown around by 150 pound wrestlers mm -hmm. and jujitsu guys. And I thought this is crazy how strong they are, but yet they're under so much control. They have better control, better power. And so just kind of, you know, it wasn't by design, but just kind of fell into it. I started looking at, um, well, what if we started applying some of these principles to contact in football? Um, what if I could have, you know, what if I could generate more force with greater control in football to, to be more efficient, more powerful, 
and all that. And then, so I started training some guys, some buddies of mine that came in the gym in Scottsdale, you know, current NFL players. And I said, Hey, let's try this, try this technique here. Try that, you know, try to maybe turn your thumb this way, get your elbow pointed this way. Let's look at your hips and your posture and other things and starting to kind of, uh, you know, put that into play with those guys. And then, you know, I'm kind of making this up as I go. So I'm going, Hey, try this. And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. And so they go off and try it and they come back and go, dude, my, my game is elevated. And, and that's hard to do when, when you're at the NFL level, you see, you see players, you know, younger players, like the day, the first day you play, you're going to make monumental gains. You're from day one to day two, but then you've been playing for a long time and you get to the NFL level. And it's like, your gains are so minuscule and sometimes they're microscopic to the point where you don't even know you're getting better. And so guys feel stuck in a rut. So then when I, when I kind of came up with some of this stuff and started sharing it with people, I saw this light bulb go on for, for a lot of the players. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And I, I went up to the university of Washington in 2012 and, and trained their offensive line and defensive line. And uh, we had great results there. These, these are all like hand techniques for blocking, defeating blocks, pass rush, things like that for the O-line and D-line. And uh, we, obviously we got, we got great results from the coaching staff in terms of like their pr- production. They had the top rushing offense in school history. Um, they had they were number two in sacks there during the time we were training them. And then the trainer called and said, Hey, we didn't have any concussions. That was a huge deal. So from there, I started up uh, my own company called safe football, but I thought, you know, Hey, this is a dirty job. I got to go do it. Someone's got to do it. We have to teach kids. If this information is working at the highest levels, I had some opportunities with some college programs. I won't name them, but, and uh, some NFL programs too, NFL teams that had said, we'd like you to be exclusive with us and, you know, make this information kind of proprietary. And I thought that's, that would be a disservice to the game. We have to share this at the lower ranks in light of the concussion concerns. And, and, and then looking back, I was a former, you know, obviously I'm a former uh, NFL player, but I didn't start there. I started on the playground, like all these other kids. And I really have a passion for teaching and I've, I've kind of wanted to prove this theory that you don't need to save the best for last. You can show kids the best information, younger players, the best information. Now, when they get started, why not? Like, that's how we're going to change the, the paradigm. That's how we're going to change this culture that has kind of gotten us to this point with football. And it's time you have to change. And that's, that's because uh, we're, we're at, a, we're at a, up against uh, some issues related to concussions, but also the rules changes and all the, all those things. Now it's kind of forcing the issue. So we've, we've been a little bit ahead of that. And it's, it's starting to really pay off, and we're seeing that result out there as we go from youth all the way to the NFL when we're training coaches and players. A lot of people, when they see you, they think right away offensive line play. But I, what I like about the, the system, and it is a system that you put together. It's not just a, a collection of, of drills or techniques. It's a system for blocking and defeating blocks. And it applies to the guys on the line of scrimmage. It applies to the guys in space. Essentially, anybody who is on the field, except for maybe the quarterback and the the kicker and punter, uh, is going to use these techniques. And it can be taught in a way that it doesn't matter exactly where you play on the field, that there are some universal principles to this that are going to apply to every single position. No question. And and that's the thing about contact. It it does get often lumped in. Well, because maybe I played offensive line, so they go, oh, this is for offensive linemen. No, it's for everybody. I mean, if you think about it, everybody on the field, with the exception of a quarterback and maybe some in the kickers, are dealing with an opponent directly across from them, and they're engaging in one-on-one contact. Um, some players do it more often than others, but it's it's a reality of the game. And contact is a very specific skill set that we don't really teach. And then it goes back to that idea that you know when you think about football, it's the only sport in the world that I can think of that where we're trying to get better at football in the off season. We do things that are arbitrary. You know, so especially for linemen, but, but, you know, for even receivers, they don't get a chance to block the, they block during the season and then they lift weights and do routes in the off season, but they're not taught how to do that from the ground up. So the system is intuitive and it works at all levels. We've, we've shared the same system we're teaching with the youth coaches and the youth players that we, we share with the NFL teams, the Dallas Cowboys, they're learning these things and they're going and they're, and they're getting the same results. It's kind of enlightening to people because it's just details that haven't been explored or maybe conveyed before in a, in a one-stop shop. So we we're real proud of it. Just again, really passionate about the idea. And I started off doing this just straight on straight passion, having no clue what I'm doing, just knowing that, Hey, we have something here that works. We have something here that can truly evolve this game the right way. Some things that, you know, all of the guys, all of our instructors that, that work with tip of the spear are former NFL players, guys. That, and the first thing they all say, everybody says the same thing. They're like, man, I wish I knew this when I was playing. 
And so our gift is to the game is to give this back to everybody. And Keith, you're a big part of that. Obviously. I mean, I know some of the things I've been, I've been able to witness and you, you've orchestrated a lot of really great things, bringing in Brian kite, who's an awesome, awesome motivational guy, but he's a really just all of his principles make sense. The tip of the spear program is a level, uh, a next level for, for coaches and players that want to take that next step and, and really improve performance, but also as a byproduct of that, increase uh, safety on the field. Scott, what's uh, neat about your, your program, as I said before, is that it, it is systems-based, meaning that there is a way to teach this from step A through Z, and there's a way to do it and teach some of these skills all year long that that you know won't get coaches in trouble with any of the the rules they might have that there's things that guys can work in the weight room to improve their skill and, and you're going to see over the course of the year some drastic improvements so when you hit the field in July or August these guys are are ready to go and they're at a point where they can maybe refine a little bit and apply some of those techniques at higher speeds or in the the, the framework of the game but now that's something they've worked all year long. And we used to just, especially you look at the offensive line, they were relegated to, well, you go get bigger, faster, and stronger. Maybe work on your footwork a little bit and speed that up. But there wasn't the skill application that there was before. When you look at something like contact and you talk about that, that it is, it is a highly performed skill, much like hitting a curveball in baseball. You have to work at it. You just don't go out there a couple weeks before the season and, and think that you're going to be able to do it at a, at a very high level. You have to work it year-round. Yeah, no question. So when I was in the NFL, I was one of the strongest players. I, I benched. I did 36 reps of 225 at the NFL Combine. I mean, I benched like 600 pounds. It's an obscene, obscene amount of weight. But then I watched these guys. There were guys that I played with around the league or guys that I watch play that didn't bench. I mean, I'm talking, maybe I'm talking O-line here for a second. Cause this is what I, what I, my experience, but this is exactly the way it is. And it's true for all positions. You got guys that are bench pressing barely their body weight in the NFL, like embarrassing levels. And that's embarrassing because there's an ego tied to, to bench press, you know, guys, well, how much you bench? Well, I saw guys that could barely even get the bar off their chest that are just launching people. So there's, so it, it kind of raises the question. And, and a lot of coaches will say, well, he's got that functional strength or, the X factor, or he wants it more or something like that, you know, and they're going, no, oh, man, I want it just as bad as him. If not more, I want it. I want it so bad. And, and then all I'm kind of prescribed to go do is go lift even more, you know? So what, what did we do with them? Well, we found ways to implement instructional training, skill development work into the off season and obviously go state by state around the, around the country. And, and, and quite frankly, in, I mean, when, when they take away opportunities for contact, it's, it started from a good place. So they said, well, you guys can't line up and hit with pads during the off season, which is a great, fantastic idea. But what, what's unfortunate about the, the, some of the regulations is that it limits the ability for coaches and players to get together and start working on those fundamental skills in a non-impact way. But what we've been able to do with Tip of the Spear is implement, uh, provide a program that is a systematic approach to contact so it's, it's progressive, that we can develop these skills of contact in the off season. They don't involve heavy hitting or even impacts. It's a, it's a lot of just showing players and teaching them how to drill from the perfect postures. And our arc system, we teach it entirely different from pretty much anything else out there outside of just the techniques. But we teach it backwards. We want to show people where they're strong when they get into a fit position. Uh, we, we teach them those details because a lot of times it's just teaching them where they need to be in the position of the body needs to be in to generate the most force. Oh, and by the way, we're not using the head to hit people, which makes a lot of sense to some of us if you start thinking about it in other terms. Like you don't use your head to move your lawn furniture around or your couch, right? So we move people with our hands, we move them with our shoulders, and we use the rest of our body to generate that force, particularly uh, force driven by the hips, which every coach is, is something that it's just something every coach is screaming at kids, telling them to use their hips, but there's a process to do that, which we share with our program. And you don't just tell them the details because you could tell a kid to do something, but they have to do the repetition over time. That's what's going to shield results. So that's what the tip of the spear system involves. It's a progression and it's a skill development program combined, which uh, takes kids, you know, players from youth all the way to the NFL. And, and it's the results have been really positive so far. And Scott, for our listeners, so, so they know, and we have all this information on our website, but the idea of, of calling it tip of the spear and the, and the reasoning behind that, and there's actually several things that kind of build into this, but 
the original term or where the term originates from, I should say, is from the military. That tip of the spear is a, a military term. So talk a little bit about that and how that played into naming the system tip of the spear. Well, in the military term, it's basically what is the tip of the spear? It's the first unit in to battle. It's the tip of the spear, the first Basically, it's the, mo- it's the first attack in an offensive, and that tip of the spear has to be super sharp. And what, what it references for us, the meaning it has for football, is we're really talking about the first point of contact, and it's not the head. The head is a dull spear, man. You don't want to be hitting with your head. It doesn't move people. It's the hands. It's teaching guys how to use the hands properly, sharpening the spear, getting that thing uh, perfect to where it, it is highly impactful. It's extremely powerful in the control and the movement and the function that you're gaining from this particular methodology by shaping, sharpening, and polishing your spear is, is uh, the proof is in the performance and the proof is in the safety. Um, we also talk about that as a reference to the shoulders. So it's the, it's the first um, and most meaningful attack in an offensive. That's, that's what the meaning is derived from. So we're really referencing contact in this with this program because contact is, is again, like an underdeveloped skill. And, and if you can see an NFL lineman who can bench barely his body weight but still take a defensive lineman and throw him on the ground and dominate him thoroughly, even though he doesn't have those, those skills of, or that, that extreme upper body strength, he's doing something right, isn't he? He's doing something mechanically to gain an advantage. And, and that's what this program does. It, it nails the sweet spot. So if you take this program and you show it to players and they can implement it, you're gaining a ton of, of, of value in terms of performance. But again, like what we're really, our big mission is, is, is twofold. It's we want to save the game of football through a superior technique and safety can be achieved with superior technique, just like in any other in this industry or sport that, that involves a degree of risk. It's how well can you be trained and, and, and finally, we have this system that's available that, again, all of our guys are saying, well, I wish I would have known this when I played. I probably would have saved several billion brain cells, man. I mean, but, but at the same time, we have that chance to do that now with the kids. And uh, it's exciting to teach Tip of the Spear to, to all levels and watch the adoption because I think it's actually <clears throat> really taking hold when we go around. I mean, we started doing this about five years ago or six years ago now. And what we're seeing is a change. It's it's slow. It's a slow change. It's gradual. But the adoption has been the result of performance, and that's what really drives this entire equation. You have to focus on training your players better, and what you get and the result. And everybody wants to be good, you know. Just ask people. They they're all they're all winners, right? <laughs> but but the real winners are the guys who implement this and, and make that commitment. And that's what this. That's the one thing about football that hasn't changed. Um, you can look at you know everybody's out there on social media self promoting. Kids are self-promoting. They're going to and if they're going to these uh, what are those agility combines? You know the sport, the, the combine camps, and they're trying to get faster. They're getting their forty time. Well, that stuff doesn't make you better. What makes you better is working back on the skills, and that's really what it ma- what matters. And and I've, I hear coaches. I'm sure you talk about this a lot on the podcast. But when it comes to recruiting, all these kids think they're going Division One. Well, obviously that's not that many kids. But when you when I see kids that want to go Division One. It's about the behaviors. What are we doing to get there? Some guys just want to have the physical attributes, but and that's but they it could still be very very effective and, and productive in their career. But but what are you doing to get there? Well, I went to this combine. I, I ran a forty. They they measured my hands. I'm like, you paid someone to measure your hands? The the NFL just like the NFL that you have the college ranks. These coaches are paid handsomely to go out and re- and research players. They find the right players. They do the do the due diligence, and it really results. Uh, the, the scholarships that, that are offered are by virtue of performance on the field in games. It's not, it's not how fast your 40 is. You know, I mean, some guys value that, but most of them don't. They just look at, Hey, is this, can this kid play? And that's a, that's a product of, of skill development. And that's what we're, we're doing, but we're also not really, this is a lot of information, Keith, you've been at some of our clinics, right? Yeah. You know, you know exactly what we're doing. It's a ton of information, but maybe you can speak to that. What, what do you think? What's the response been from coaches? Well, I think the guys who have experienced it really love it. And and as I told you before, it's something my offensive line coach started bringing back to me probably around 2011, 2012. He was seeing you speak at Jim McNally's Cool Clinic, and and he picked up some of the stuff that Jim was teaching, continuing to teach at his, his offensive line coach retreat that he used to do. And uh, as I told you, like when, when we went out in, in uh, last November and we shot this in Arizona, I realized we had a lot of the information, which was great for us. I mean, we had times a tiny line compared to the rest of our league, and these guys were effective in moving people using these techniques. But 
found out that we were kind of, even with what we had, missing out on a lot of the detail of it. And so as we've gone through some of our instructor training and we've worked with other guys out there and been able to witness those things, there's definitely, once they experience some of these things and they feel it and they see how it all works together, you know, all these details, a light bulb goes on. Like there is illumination for those guys. And I saw it too in our instructor group who uh, by and large are a group of of, uh, former NFL guys or guys who have played at a high level. A lot of them have some coaching experience or or are out there coaching high school ball right now. And, you know, their experience over the over that weekend when we got together and started teaching them this stuff to a man, you heard every single one of those guys say, I wish I had this stuff when I played. I mean, some very impactful talks for those guys as we gave them the opportunity to, to stand up and teach and do some mock clinics and stuff like that. And as they were talking about, it was very organic because we didn't script anything for them, but their viewpoint on this too. And I'm sure that's something you've seen with the different guys you've worked with. In fact, I remember it was probably a, a, about a year ago now, uh, you were in Cleveland working with the Browns and you were there with Olin Crooks. Hey, I'm not sure. And so, sorry, Keith, but I'm not sure we're supposed to mention the Browns. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, those things, <laughs> those, those things are going to come to fruition this year. So, um, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you had Olin Crutz and Anthony Munoz, two Hall of Famers. One is arguably the the best offensive lineman to ever play the game, and they were kind of sharing that message too as they spoke to the players. And you hear them talking about their experiences too with with this. I, I think that's what I've seen is that it is a new way of doing things. It, I think in, in a lot of ways we're caught in a paradigm. And right now I think it's an incredible opportunity. I know a lot of coaches out there get worried about the future of the game. and But they'll to a man, they'll talk about how we're making it safer and we're finding better techniques. And I think right now even the rule change in the NFL, which a lot of people think from the fan side worry that, oh, the game's going to be soft, but what you're doing fits right in with it. And it's actually, it's a more effective way. Like when I took this stuff on in 2011, 2012, whenever we we started implementing it, safety wasn't at the forefront then of, of everybody's thoughts. It was, we were looking at it from performance perspective. We can move people better, especially with some undersized guys. No question. Well, the reality is this is not, you know, people kind of assume that because you're not using your head, it somehow softens the game, which is just absolutely false. We're, we're actually making this game far more physical and far more oppressive. When you get players that know this stuff, and we have kids that we can share with you, NFL players down to, to the youth level, just watching them on film going, wow. And we'll, I'll ask people, hey, I want you to tell me if you see head contact there. Let me know if you see head contact. And all they see is a player dominating thoroughly, destroying another guy. But but not at the expense of the brain. And that's, and that's what this game is about. This game is, needs to evolve. I mean, think about the evolution in scheme. Gosh, I mean, that's, that's where the main evolution has, has occurred. And I think given some of the restrictions and regulations, and you take a look at the NFL, which is a, uh, you know, it's an entertainment business. You've got to go there to audition. The best players will stay. But there's just not a lot of focus on development there. So we haven't really had that focus on development. Um, at least we haven't had the information. And that's one thing I know we both share. We both believe that. Um, this is not a concussion problem. This is an information problem. And to your point about us training these uh, new instructors for tip of the spear, they're all, everybody comes from a high level background and they all said the same thing, man, I wish I would have known that, but it was just an information barrier. You know, we didn't have that information. So the good thing is like, we're, we're out there teaching it to the fans who are concerned about this game, the integrity of the games, you know, getting eroded. That's simply happening by virtue of some of the changes that are happening in the regulations. But if we come back and say, but we found a solution and it's technique and it absolutely is technique safety through superior technique. If we can make that change from within organically, and that's on the coaches out there, that's on the players out there, then, then all this, this, this entire conversation shifts and it starts to become more interesting to watch, more interesting to develop and play. And now you give people tools that they can truly work on in the off season. I mean, I remember like I, I had uh, a, a, an off season program when I was in high school that we were running a mile. I mean, how arbitrary is that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I was first of, all, first of all, I was fat. It was awful. I'm running around the track. I'm going, but when do I ever run that far? I don't. I mean, I, so now you're seeing an evolution, a real strong evolution in performance training. You'll see that too, where you have groups like Exos out in Arizona and they're around the country. They're training uh, athletes to enhance their athletic ability by improving speed, 
strength, flexibility, explosiveness, and those kind of things, which are very important. The problem with that is that not, it's not a problem that they're doing it. A, the problem is that that takes focus and takes precedence for development before they even get to the point where they've mastered skills. See, if we were doing this the right way, we would train kids on, on the techniques to master the techniques first and then enhance them. Kind of like you need to learn how to, how to hit a curveball before you go out and start lifting weights right. or, or, you know, like the guys in Falco or whatever they were doing. But we have to start with skills and then we add, we can tweak or enhance our performance to our athletic abilities. That's, that's kind of what's exciting to see because now I think the, the lack of information was, was a problem. Now it's not. It's become widely available. We, we have two ways we offer this. We offer this training on site. So we go to your school. We go to, to youth football programs. Um, we fly out. Our guys come. Our guys are professionals. I mean, there are no – I'm super high on these guys because they, they, they're great people. They're extremely knowledgeable. They have a huge, deep, deep knowledge of the game. They also are very passionate about helping people. And they have this uh, master knowledge of technique. And, and we come out and we service that through coaches' clinics. We service the, the players after the coaches' clinics. So we work hand-in-hand hand with the coaches to get the kids trained. And we also have an online offering, uh, which, again, is ex- extensive information. But we're, we're going to be adding to that. So this thing is, is an evolution, but this is just the start. And uh, I'd say it's exciting. Yeah, definitely. And you and I talked about just how this can can grow as we look to take – teaching in level one and bring in the level two stuff with application to different positions and different situations and eventually evolving this into how do you use it in certain schemes, which uh, most of the the coaches out there have that ability, I think, to take take it to, to them or themselves. But we're again, we're looking at putting this together in a way that it fits together in a system. This is how you go out and drill it. This is how you teach it. And that's an important part of the game, too. We talk about looking, you know, how you look at drills. And it's something we talked about on our last uh, podcast together that everything has to have a purpose. It shouldn't be random for number one, efficiency and not wasting time. But uh, number two, the the safety of the players, like you don't want to expose players to things that they don't need to be exposed to, especially if it's not going to have application in the game. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you get so much time. Every coach can agree that they don't have enough time to train their players. And that's true. I mean, you, you have complex scheme you know, implementation. you got to teach these guys what to do, and then there's just limited time in teaching them how to do it. So we have to take advantage of any opportunities we have to develop our kids through the weight room, off-season training, through individual stuff they can do on their own. We have a pre-practice plan we teach. Um, it's for every player to develop and enhance their skills. And, and, and we work with NFL players like again down the youth, and I guess what, the same, they do the same things. So why wouldn't we want that? You know, why wouldn't we want our kids to be gaining access to this information? We do want it. We, we enjoy watching the fruits of the labors, and it does take work. And that's the one thing. I mean, everybody wants to get that, that helmet, you know, that helmet that it's like a magic pill. There's a lot of people like that. And, and the people that really make it in this game at the highest levels are the people that commit, dedicate themselves to improvement. And we want those people to, to lead this charge, to drive this change because they're going to be noticed by everybody else going, hey, how the hell did that guy kick my rear end? So, you know, that, I played against that guy last year, and he wasn't nearly as – well, he doesn't look any different this year, but his technique is, is different, and now he's implemented that. And if you can do that across the board, we always say, like, you know, if you, you look at the weight room uh, developments, in the past it would be – a coach would be excited if his team collectively had a 15% increase in strength, right? Well, for whatever, a 10% increase in strength, it's measurable. They're going, hey, we must be better. How many of those coaches were disappointed at the end of their season because they didn't really improve their wins and losses? Maybe they didn't, the players didn't improve much on their technique. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no value for lifting. There's definitely value in, in strength conditioning. But what if we got every player on the field, on the team, 15% better at technique? Well, now you've just upgraded your team. That's an exponential growth of your team in, in terms of production and performance, and that equates directly to wins and losses. And and it yields much safer outcomes. So we can find this confidence in that through information. And uh, that's the exciting thing we're doing. And it's, it's, you know, we're finding that all these first adopters, it's kind of an arms race, I guess. You could call it an arms race for football. The guys in the know, they're doing this stuff. And, and the rest of the, gr- the groups, they'll, they'll trickle along behind. But, like, we, we want to see this expedited. And it's not because it's really in the name of keeping this game alive because we need this game of football more than ever. You know, some of our kids need it. Um, a lot of our kids need it. 
you know, they need to focus on something, learn, learn about to develop themselves as men. And that's something that really we're passionate about as well, because that's something I've been given that gift. And I don't want to see that, that gift lost over, over concerns overseas. Scott, uh, what do you got going on right now? I know last year was a lot with the OTAs. What do you have coming up here in, in the next month or so? Uh, for training, we, we're kind of going all over the place, man. We're going to next week. I'll be uh, in Cincinnati for the, at the Bengals facility. We're going to be doing a clinic there for the Bengals and a, and a bunch of college coaches and then uh, followed by the cool clinic, which is the, the uh, number one offensive line clinic at football. Check that out. The cool clinic. I'll be on Saturday stage on the stage on Saturday with Jim McNally presenting to uh, NFL coaches and college coaches and, it's exciting that I'm getting on a plane on uh, what Sunday going to Canada for uh, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, the CFL team, working with those guys, and then coming back here and we got some youth camps coming up after that. So got a busy schedule, Keith. Well, that's great stuff, Scott. As I said before, really appreciate that that you partner with us and you're part of the team, and uh, I look forward to uh, some of the great things we're going to be able to do here over the next few seasons. Same here, buddy. Thanks for having me on. Congrats on the on the success of the podcast. Well, I think you can see why I'm so excited about what Scott Peters is doing, not just with the Cleveland Browns, but with Tip of the Spear. I think it's great for the game. Check out all they're doing at tipofthespearfootball.com. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you're enjoying it, please head over to iTunes or Spotify and click five star for rate. If you have a minute, write a review. It really helps the podcast. And follow me on Twitter at Coach K Grabowski.